Hello, and welcome to this first of our two lectures on the B vitamins. We're going to start by looking at a couple of the B vitamins and then do a separate lecture on the other B vitamins. The B vitamins are water-soluble vitamins. When we talk about the B vitamins, we say that they function collectively as what are called coenzymes. Okay, and coenzymes, you can think of them as also being keys that unlock or allow for the energy release in other foods we eat. So as you can see from the image here, Without coenzymes, you have compounds A and B that cannot respond to an enzyme in your body. However, when the coenzyme, for example, a certain B vitamin is in place, compounds A and B are attracted to the active site on the enzyme, and then they react. The reaction is completed with the formation of a new product. In this case, the product is called AB. And then the product AB can be released. You can think of the B vitamins as acting as coenzymes. They're essentially intermediaries to allow the activity of different nutrients into your body. The first B vitamin that we'll start out by learning about is what's called thiamine. Thiamine is also known as vitamin B1. This was the first B vitamin to be identified. Now thiamine is widely available in foods that we eat. Remember it's one of the ones that has to be in enriched grain products, but things like whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds, pork, milk, and orange juice are also good sources of B1. Thiamine is important because it assists in energy production, carbohydrate metabolism, the production of ribose, and the health of your nervous system. Like all B vitamins, thiamine functions as a coenzyme, and it plays an important role in neurological function. So I'd say the two primary sources of thiamine that you should know, not sources, excuse me, the two primary functions you should know is neurological function and that it's a coenzyme. The thiamine deficiency disease is called beriberi and it occurs when glucose cannot be metabolized to yield energy. Symptoms of beriberi include things like weakness, loss of appetite, irritability, loss of muscle coordination, deep muscle pain, enlarged heart, and edema. And thi the thiamine deficiency disease, beriberi, is found in areas where refined grains predominate because refining grains reduces the thiamine content. In the U.S., our grain supply is enriched, but in areas where there's not enriched products, if there's highly refined grains, the thiamine has been removed, and then thiamine deficiency can occur. In the United States, one of the few places where we tend to see thiamine deficiency is among alcoholics. This is a picture of what beriberi looks like. There's wet beriberi and dry beriberi. Okay, they both cause neurological damage. As far as excessive amounts of thiamine go, it's not a good idea to go way overboard on your nutrients, but there is no UL for thiamine that is known. The RDA for men is 1.2 milligrams per day, and for women, it's 1.1 milligrams. Again, the dietary sources of thiamine include things like enriched bread products, pork, things like potatoes, sunflower seeds, and black beans. But you're going to find most of the thiamine in your diet, the typical American diet, that is, from enriched bread products. Our next B vitamin is vitamin B2. It's called riboflavin. Riboflavin is also a coenzyme, and it participates in numerous energy-yielding pathways, for example, promoting the breakdown of fatty acids. Riboflavin assists with some vitamin and mineral metabolism, and it's involved in converting folate, niacin, B6, and vitamin K into their active forms. The riboflavin deficiency disease is called A-riboflavinosis. And it's characterized by things like inflammation of the mouth and the tongue, or dermatitis, cracking on the tongue in the corner of the mouth, a condition called chelosis. It can be related to eye disorders and confusion, sensitivity to sun and confusion. And it usually occurs with deficiencies of other B vitamins. You don't get just one B vitamin deficiency. If you're deficient in one B vitamin, like riboflavin, you're probably deficient in all the other ones, like thiamine, niacin, B6, etc. Again, alcoholics are going to be at risk for deficiency. That's because alcoholics take in a lot of calories from alcohol, but alcohol doesn't contain very many B vitamins. As far as excessive amounts go, there's no UL for riboflavin that is known. There's no, any, no evidence of toxicity from megadosing. Megadosing is usually what we consider to be consuming 10 times the RDA. One thing that is known, however, is that taking very high doses of riboflavin may cause bright yellow urine. The name riboflavin actually is derived from the Latin word flavus, meaning yellow, so it does give off a yellowish hue and in very large amounts could cause yellow urine, really yellow urine that is. As far as the needs go, the RDA for men is 1.2 milligrams per day and for women it's 1.1 milligrams per day. 
Dietary sources of riboflavin include things like fortified bread products. And the best source, if you had to think of outside of the bread products, would be milk. Okay, milk is a good source of riboflavin. And one of the primary reasons why milk is stored in opaque containers now, as opposed to glass containers like it used to be, is because sunlight and exposure to light destroys riboflavin. Okay, so again, the opaque containers of milk containers are there in order to prevent the destruction of riboflavin. Other dietary sources of riboflavin include things like animal flesh, mushrooms, broccoli, asparagus, whole grains, and dark green leafy vegetables. The next B vitamin that we'll look at is vitamin B3. B3 is also called niacin. Like all the B vitamins, niacin is also a coenzyme, and it's involved in over 200 reactions. So you don't know the details of it. You don't need to know the details of it. Just know that it works as a coenzyme. It also can be synthesized in the body from the essential amino acid tryptophan. Okay? Um, there's two forms of niacin, nicotinic acid and nicotinamide. The deficiency disease associated with niacin deficiency is called pellagra. And pellagra means rough or scaly skin. Pellagra occurs most commonly in alcoholics, like all the B vitamin deficiency disorders, but it's also, interestingly enough, common in corn-eating groups. There's certain corn-eating groups where if they just eat corn, the niacin is bound up. But if that corn has been treated with base, uh, for example, like in the preparation of masa for making corn tortillas, that base actually releases the bound niacin, and then people eating those corn tortillas would actually get more niacin than the people who are just eating plain corn. Pellagra is characterized by what's called the four Ds, dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and death. Like all of the B vitamins, it plays an important role in your neurological function. So as far as the functions go for all the B vitamins, make sure you have neuro or neurological committed to memory. And likewise, if you're deficient, you're going to develop deficient. Uh, neurological related conditions. In this case, it's dementia. As far as excess goes, there's a condition known as niacin flush. You might have heard of this because people who have very high blood lipids are oftentimes prescribed high doses of niacin by their cardiologist. Mega dosing with supplemental niacin called nicotinic acid um, can sometimes cause flushing of places like your face, your chest, and your upper arms. Now, the UL is set at 35 milligrams per day. But the niacin flush usually occurs when it's greater than 100 milligrams per day. So you're like almost tripling your UL. It's a really high dose. It does help bring lipids down. But if you do experience the flushing, which is kind of a burning sensation, it's not, as we know, very harmless. However, it's recommended then that you go down on your dose or you look for a different therapeutic approach to lowering your blood lipids. Niacin needs for men are 16 milligrams a day and for women, 14. The best sources of niacin, foods like poultry, fish, tuna, beef, peanuts and ready-to-eat cereals, asparagus, and coffee and tea has a little bit too. Niacin is unique because it's heat stable. Very, lost of it is li very little of it is lost in cooking. You can synthesize niacin from tryptophan. 60 milligrams of tryptophan, which is an essential amino acid, can create one milligram of niacin, if for whatever reason you didn't get enough niacin. 